So we specified military spec mm. Velcro. Oh, can't say Velcro. No. Damn, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Put that one in the paper. <laughs> okay. Come on. Hi there, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. So I'm Andy. This is Richard from ZuliDiver.com. Um, we're just getting together to have a chat about our range of lunar uh, watch straps um, and anybody who's new uh, to this particular range of straps, uh, which is just going to explain a little bit about the history and how we got to uh, this collection. So, Richard, can you just... Absolutely, yeah. This was a, um, a real passion for us to get this up and running because uh, there are so many people in the watch world are huge fans of the, the Lunar Watches, the Speedmaster and the Bulliver, both of which we are wearing at the moment. Yeah. And there's been so much written about these watches, uh, the, the history of them, how NASA selected them to go to the moon, that um, it's quite difficult to find new material about the watches. However, the straps that held the watches are quite elusive. Uh, these straps were, the original straps were specially made, there was very few of them were made and it's extremely difficult to find good authentic copies of them. Okay, right. Do you know how many exist at the moment? Um, very few because very few were made. I mean, if you're lucky enough to visit somewhere like the Smithsonian, you will see the original moon watches that have survived with the original lunar straps on them. Uh, these straps were made by the Flight Crew Integration Division of NASA once the Speedmaster was selected. Uh, the primary goal of the strap, of course, was to be long enough to fit over the extremely bulky atmospheric spacesuit they were wearing on the moon, uh, which is why you see then these uh, slightly odd photos of the astronauts in the capsules with the strap wound several times around the wrist. But there's very, very few really exist. And the ones that do exist are in a really terrible condition. If you look online, there's one that was worn by Fred Hayes on Apollo 13, uh, which is, it, it looks to all intents and purposes like a ragged piece of Velcro. Okay. Uh, but that just sold for $5,000. Right. Uh, if you want a watch attached, which is very rare, uh, and again, there's a lot online about it, then the Bulliver watch that Dave Scott wore in Apollo 15, that still had the original strap attached. And we, the original watch as well. And the original watch, yes. So the, the brief story is, is uh, there was three EVAs, extravehicular activities on Apollo 15. On EVA 2, his Speedmaster failed. The, 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 okay. the Hesalite crystal actually popped off. All right. And he had the Bulova as a backup watch. So he took the Velcro strap off the Speedmaster, put it on the Bulova, and he wore that for four hours and 50 minutes on EVA3. That watch sold a couple of years ago for $1.6 million. And it was, and still is, the only privately owned moon watch. Okay. But for us, from Zulu Diver's perspective, what was of more interest was the fact we got a really good look at the strap. So normally they're in a museum wrapped around a dummy or something or a space suit. Here, the, the auction house took really good close-ups of the strap, so it was wonderful to see the original moon strap with moon dust still in it, or to see the, the, the drawing numbers on the side of it. That was really exciting. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, so we, we, we kind of took inspiration from, from that and the, and the story behind the, 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 the NASA strap, uh, and we, we've developed uh, a great range, what I believed, a great range of uh, uh, different colours um, and um, Rich has taken some time and, and thought to come up some, with some really interesting names for them um, and th th there is a meaning behind them so I think if you can maybe just start off with our most popular strap which is the Tranquility strap, if you can just tell me the, the reason why you, why you Oh, right. That, that made a good name for that this particular yeah. grey colour uh, lunar strap. Right, okay, yeah. I think what was really important was when we were creating the straps, we wanted to create a story behind each one. It wasn't sufficient just to put them on the internet and say, lunar straps for sale. Uh, because we were coming out with the different designs, it was important to have a bit of a story behind each one. What did the colours remind us of, etc. And I think it's also important at this point to say that when we started, 
with it. We looked at the original NASA blueprints and we really, really worked hard to get the dimensions accurate because we wanted this to be a proper homage to the moon strap. So yeah, so we came up with all the different straps that you can see here in front of you. Uh, Tranquility was the gray one, which was just a moon dust gray. Okay. Tranquility, of course, as people will know, is named after the Sea of Tranquility, where the Apollo 11 capsule uh, landed in 1969. Um, I, do you want me to go through some of the others? Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love you to. So right, okay. um, I, I think the one that I quite like is, is the Mercury one. Yeah. So if you can just explain um, a little about the... Yeah, Mercury. Um, the, tw the twin grey stripes on Mercury reminded us of the Mercury capsule, which was the forerunner to Apollo. Mercury was critical to making the Apollo missions a success because it had two astronauts in it, and the Mercury mission was all about learning to dock. So to see whether or not they could dock onto another ship, because without that, the future Apollo lunar modules and command modules couldn't separate and redock. Okay. And the twin stripes on that really reminded us of it, and we thought, yeah, Mercury would be a perfect name for that, I thought. Okay. Um, this one here, is, this is called Horizon. This is quite unusual, this colour with the brown on it, and that had a slightly militaristic feel, we thought. And Horizon is a very unusual project. You might have to delve around on the internet to find that one. Horizon was a, fic well, it turned out to be, thank goodness, fictional project where the Americans decided they were going to try and put a military base on the moon because they feared that the, uh, the competition might try and actually attack a moon, future moon base. So because this was slightly militaristic looking, we thought Horizon would be a good name for that. Okay. Uh, others we've got here are Redstone with the red stripe named after the Redstone rocket, which took some of the early capsules, the very early capsules, up into space. In fact, the, the, the rockets before uh, Redstone were called the Atlas rockets. So Redstone was actually a ballistic missile that a couple of guys who had, uh, we call it the right stuff, were brave enough to sit on the end of yeah. and be launched up. Um, the white one, which is, I confess, my personal favorite, is called Eagle. Again, this is obviously named after the uh, Lunar, cap, the lunar module, not okay. the command module, the lunar module, which landed on the moon with Armstrong and Aldrin. Um, there's the famous line, the eagle has landed. I think the best line is actually the eagle has wings, which was the first line that everybody forgets about when it's separated. And this again, it's, in the, it's, it's clearly in the American colors. Yeah. But the white strap isn't just about replicating the flag. Uh, right up until Apollo 7, the NASA straps were actually white across the spacesuits. So we felt it was really important to have a white one in there as a homage to Apollo 7 and earlier. Okay. There's a special feature of, of that particular one as well, if you'd like to. Accept. Yeah, this one, the whole strap is actually luminous, okay. which is, as far as I know, that's a first. And it, it's, it's pretty cool. So when you look at it with the loom from your Speedmaster, plus the loom from the strap, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good, um, Pretty good nod to the space program, we think. And it's a lovely green color, which if you're really geeky, really reminds you of the flight computer that was in the Apollo capsules. Okay. Yeah. Fact too far, maybe. <laughs> no, that's interesting. I hadn't um, thought about that. Actually. What have we got? We've also got Odyssey, uh, which is named after the Apollo 13 capsule, which returned the astronauts famously back to the Earth. We've got Aurora, which we named after the top secret, maybe it exists, maybe it doesn't, hypersonic aircraft that astronauts were flying, it was a spy aircraft. We have Andromeda, which I'm wearing at the moment, which is uh, with just a very, very faint blue flag. Uh, oh, no, you've uh, got Andromeda. No, yeah, you've yeah, got Andromeda. I, uh, sorry, Richard. I, no, I, I'm sorry. You've I got swapped Andromeda. it over. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've got Andromeda's Andromeda got a tiny, tiny little dark fleck in it, which is really representative of deep space. And um, we have Solaris, which is obviously the orange one, which is named after our sun. But I think if you see, now that we've taken it off, what you end up with is an incredibly long end and an incredibly short end. Now, to some people, this might look a little 
well, it might not look that intuitive as a watch strap, but if you really know the history of the Apollo watch straps, that is exactly the sort of look you want. Because there's so many wonderful images of the astronauts having them strapped onto their wrists, the, 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 out on um, test beds when they were looking at the watches originally. And as a fan of the watches, that's really what I was looking for. We were at a watch event the other evening, a Red Bar event, where we were looking at some of these straps with some people and everybody commented on how authentic it looked with the, the overly long end. That's great to know. Although, I have to say, this is actually, of course, shorter than the original strap. This is 25 centimeters, which we felt was the optimal length to go around the wrist, which is based on the strap that NASA developed for Skylab, where the guys obviously weren't wearing suits at all. The original NASA strap was 56 centimeters long and was long on both ends because that had to go around the suit itself. So the, the, the materials that we've used, um, um, I think we're really proud of. So R Richard, if you can just explain about the, the quality of the hook and loop um, mm. system that we're using on this. Yeah, the, the materials were really important that we got them right. Um, we knew about the durability of the original straps and we were quite keen to replicate that. So the hook and lip system we've used is military specification, which means that it doesn't fray and you don't get straggly ends coming off it. Uh, the material we're using has been tested down to minus 30, so it has been frozen solid and it still locks in place. We've also had the material opened and shut 5,000 times. So again, you've got good longevity with the materials that we've used, which we think is appropriate as we really are trying to uh, push this as as good a homage to the original Moonstrap as you're going to find. Yeah, Although the original Moonstrap, as we said, was very long. So, the question is, are we going to make a very long one? Well, funny you should say that, Richard. So, we had some feedback from some of our customers and um, we've decided that we're going to work um, on a new design, well, a new design, but in effect an old design to the original specification of the NASA uh, strap. So uh, it should be coming soon, and uh, I'll be interested to hear any comments that uh, any of you have about that. Um, we're also going to be introducing a new range of six colours as well, um, because uh, they've been really popular and we're just really proud of the collection. So I'd just like to say thank you for joining us. I hope you found it interesting. If you've got any comments that you'd like to leave us, we'll obviously have a look at them and we'll try and get back to you uh, with any questions that you might have. Thanks again. Bye. Bye.